All right, in this segment, we're gonna talk about when things go wrong, what could go wrong, how, maybe how to prevent that from happening, if something goes wrong, what to do about it. So the, the first thing that I wanna ask you is about uh, officers. Like, um, sometimes we've had officers that just stop coming to meetings. So I guess, how could you prevent that from happening? Or if it does keep happening, then what do you do about it? In our bylaws, we have a couple of specific rules about um, attendance and what officers have to do in order to stay an officer. So we have a probationary period. And if the officer in that probationary period comes to two consecutive meetings, then he or she would be cleared from probation and would be back to to the normal status we have as an officer. But if that didn't happen and that wasn't the case, then we would have a meeting to talk about that specific officer and whether he or she has been completing his or her roles in um, all the duties that come with being an officer. This is a very hard like thing to deal with, right? Because you don't want to have to necessarily replace an officer. It's a little bit awkward. So just being able to talk about with the other officers first, seeing what um, approach could be happening for that. And then if things got really serious, then bringing it to like an actual meeting and saying, hey, we need to deal with this officer. This officer hasn't been doing his or her job. And now um, we need to see if we need to vote to remove this officer or if we should, you know, give the officer a second chance, something like that. I would say probably nine times out of 10 though, um, if if an officer is not showing up and doesn't plan on continuing to show up, most of the time they'll just end up resigning and yeah. they'll say, hey, look guys, I'm sorry, I just, I got busy mm -hmm. or you know something came up and I'm just not gonna be able to be yeah. as active anymore. So let's just talk about the general membership. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been very good at increasing the membership, mm -hmm. but sometimes we've had the opposite effect where um, membership has really yeah. gone down to just bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So I guess, um, what would you say would be your strategy, like if your membership is dwindling and you want to get people mm -hmm. more involved, like what's what would have been some of your strategies to, to build the program back up? I think just going and asking people like, hey, why haven't you be, been coming to student leadership lately? Like, I know you usually come. Is there a reason for that? Um, I think just reaching out to people personally is a big thing. Um, and also just like maybe having polls like, hey, is there a reason why you choose to not come to student leadership or why do you come to student leadership? I think just that outreach or, you know, sometimes it might just be like a little bit of a rough patch. Like before, you know, AP tests, maybe we had less people or maybe, you know, before the day before the SAT, there was not many people either, you know. So sometimes it just kind of depends. Um, but really it, go, it goes back to seeing what the members want and seeing like how you can better serve everyone in that group. When you're in a position of leadership, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the presidential yeah. role, you have to delegate. Mm -hmm. You can't possibly do everything yeah. yourself. So what do you do to make sure that nobody's gonna drop the ball, so to speak? Like, how do you make sure that they're getting the mm -hmm. work done that they're supposed to be getting done? One of the things I chose to do is I had people kind of like work in pairs so I would have maybe like the vice president work with the social media chair I would have the treasurer work with the social activities chair something like that just so they could keep each other accountable um, and the example of the treasurer and the social activities chair the social activities chair came up with like a list of possible activities and then they looked at costs and then they would bring it to the treasurer and the treasurer would be like okay maybe this is possible maybe that's not something like that so I think having pairs working within the officer team was also pretty useful. Um, luckily for us, even though we had seven officers, really just making sure that your officers know that they have support and they can get help for whatever they need. Um, I think that's like the biggest thing. Have you ever had a situation where you've assigned a task to too many people and then nobody did it because they were like, well, I thought they were doing it? I think that wasn't really a problem for our organization. We had more problems um, at times with like people forgetting to do a certain task and just having to be reminded several times to do it. I think that was probably the bigger issue. So how did you know that they were forgetting? Yeah, so you know how in Google Docs it tells you when like things are last edited by like that's one of the things like if I went back and I checked on a document it hasn't been updated like the last update was by me I'd be like okay you need to go back through and look at it you know 
um, or just like if something wasn't being sent and I was like, hey, you know, we haven't gotten this posted yet. Like, can you go ahead and do that now? Stuff like that. Okay. So just gentle reminders. What happens when somebody does drop the ball? You know, it might not even be somebody within the organization. Mm-hmm. It might be somebody outside of the organization. You know, like food doesn't show up or, or you know, something doesn't happen that's supposed to. I think the biggest thing is just knowing that there are other people there to support you and not freaking out too much, you know, like in events of like emergencies, the biggest thing is to not cause chaos. You know, like if someone is having a medical emergency, you're taught like you need to delegate specific roles to people so they can go out and help what's happening. Um, Like, for example, at our banquet, the catering people were late. Did you know that? Well. Yeah, you might not have been able to tell, you know, some of the officers were like running around trying to figure out what we could do, like calling them, seeing where they were, stuff like that, you know, but we didn't all create mass panic with everyone there, you know. Let's talk about interpersonal relationships Mm -hmm. in the group. Um, People that that choose to be officers, they tend to be very passionate Mm -hmm. about things. And so, and sometimes they have different perspectives and sometimes there can be some drama. So what are some ways to keep that drama to a minimum? Really just comes back to like respect and stuff. We didn't have like a super big problem with this. Um, But you know, there were times where I was like, hey, like cut it out. Like that's not what we need right now. And you know, um, there'd be a lot of pettiness, I would say at times, passive aggressiveness. But that's like a natural thing. Like that's going to happen, right? But the biggest thing is just focusing on like what's important and then settling your differences as well. Like I said in our group chat, you know, we had a lot going on probably every night. And sometimes, you know, there'd be a lot of disagreements. So it really just came back to like, you know, your maturity and where you are and being willing to apologize if necessary, right? Because, you know, you might think you're right, but you're really not. Or you had some kind of misconception about someone else. So just getting past that, I think is the biggest thing. What do you think, you know, when people are being petty and passive Mm -hmm. aggressive, where do you think that comes from? I think it just kind of goes back to like, we're all teenagers. We haven't really like spent that much time like doing stuff like this. Like, you know, in middle school, this like wasn't really a thing to be like an officer, like super involved in things. Like you spend, what, like 14 years of your life where everyone tells you exactly what you need to do. And now you have a chance to be able to come up with some ideas for yourself. So it's just a lot of learning processes, I would say. How do you settle interpersonal disagreements? Like this person really wants this, this person really wants that. I found that our organization did really good with Google Forms and polls. So oftentimes if we had a disagreement, it always just came back down to a vote. You know, what the majority wants, that's what we're going to go with, you know. So that was for things like lock-in ideas, lock-in names, concert names, um, so everything like that. That's how it mostly got solved. If two people were really passionate about something, we would always try to come back down to a compromise because um, you don't want someone to be, like, really upset with what's happening. Um, That's never the goal. So you want to just try to work it out. How do you encourage students to become officers in the future? Like the officer, the officers in your leadership program are extremely Mm -hmm. important. You know, if you have the wrong people, it, it, you know, it's, it could be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. If you have the right people, it it can really make orchestra a lot better. So my junior year, I was the only non-senior officer. Right. And that meant we needed to to fill the rest of those officer roles. So we had like a little Zoom session where I explained like what each student leadership position was and um, why it was important to the organization. And we had a lot of people run. Um, That was really good. This year, we had a lot of people run for basically everything but president. So a little bit different. Usually we're trying to fill like a different kind of role. Um, But I would say just... If people want to be leaders, they will step up, right? If someone really wants to be the secretary or treasurer, they're going to want to run for those positions, right? So I think that's just kind of a natural thing that happens with people choosing to run for those positions. Let's say you have a student and mm-hmm. you said, well, they'd be a great officer. I think they'd be great as the secretary. Yeah. And they run for secretary and they get beat in the election. Um, is there anything you can do about that? I mean, of course, you don't want to change the election results. Or yeah, anything, yeah, no. <laughs> I think 
like for our organization, we also have committee heads in addition to officers. So these are pretty different. The committee heads do things. We have one for like inventory. We have one for um, like handling sectional stuff, you know, something like that. So even if a specific person doesn't get the officer role that they want, there are still opportunities for them to lead within um, the organization. And I know I like to tell them, like, hey, even though you might not be an officer, you are still important to this organization. You still have, you know, an opinion. You can still have a say. You are still participating. And, um, you know, it just ultimately just comes back down to that specific person. Is there any other, is there any other, like, big things that you can think of that could be, could be really big problems if, if we don't have some oversight towards or something along those lines? Yeah. One of our things is we don't let incoming freshmen run as officers. I think that's a pretty good, important one. Um, so only incoming sophomores, juniors, and seniors can be president, or not president, an officer. So I think that's like a pretty good thing we've already set up already. Um, and honestly, just, just keeping people engaged, I would say, you know, like remember, this is a group thing. Student leadership serves orchestra as a whole like it's not just for like personal gain or anything like that so i think remember having people remember the intentions behind everything they're doing is like the biggest thing i think that having a student leadership organization is is very important i i would hope that every orchestra especially at the high school level would, would have something like this it's really good for the students because most students are not going into music as their future career. They're going into something else. And giving them leadership opportunities is, is something big that they can take away from the program um, and, and lead to their future success. So if you don't have a student leadership program or orchestra club at your school, I would highly encourage you to start one. All right, we'll see you next time.